Hey everyone, Jason Huey here from Digital Block, based out of Fresno, California. I'm here to go over a couple things with you. One of this is safety and regulation temperature of your helium hotspot. If you're taking those indoor hotspots and bringing them outside into the sun, into the temperature, things you have to be aware of, precautions you have to take. Again, this is July 4th, 2021, and it is 100 degrees out here in Fresno right now. I'm going to show you my hotspot that I have out here and I built a custom enclosure for it. This is a prototype we built. We're planning on selling these as kits or actually in this video I will be giving you a parts list that is super easy to build yourself. Everything you can get off of Amazon. So first let's look over some numbers. Here is my enclosure. To be honest it took me about an hour to build this thing. Super quick, easy. Let's look at some numbers real quick. I have an infrared scanner here. This is by Keto Tech. You'll be able to find this on this list. I'm just gonna pull the trigger once. And it shows the exterior of this vent is 108 degrees. Now I can hold down the trigger. You can see an update. It gets hotter as I go up. Let's go to the side. This had some direct sunlight earlier. And up on top, what, we're at 112 degrees. Now, if I was to do the same thing, measure this steel door, it's 145 degrees. Inside of this disclosure, I have a Bobcat 300 and it's been running 24 seven. I'm gonna pop this open. You may notice I have a ceiling right here for my LM400 cable. And right here, I have an ethernet. This is a PoE. I have, um, oh, I forget what you call them. One of the enclosures, but I did a heat shrink marine tube over that. So. This right here is the guts of it. Let's take some measurements. Let's measure the exterior bobcat. It's 110. That's the measure down here. It drops about two degrees. This, as it's generating the power and power is transferring, it's gonna run hotter. I'm gonna explain a couple of the parts here to you and show you how this all works Essentially right here, let's talk about airflow. The air comes in through here. It blows fresh air in, and this is exhaust fan. It takes hot air and blows it out of the enclosure. This, as you know, sucks up any moisture, which isn't a problem when it's 100 plus degrees out. These are USB powered. This is my thermo board. This is what allows me to actually set the therm uh, temperature. Here's the actual th um, measuring gauge. And so I can set this to 96 degrees, run all the time, completely turn it off, or once it reaches 84 degrees, both fans will kick on. I like to keep it at 92. So this is really easy and simple. I just took some three millimeter tape, 3M uh, adhesive tape, and adhered it to here. It holds it just fine. Right over here, the power runs through underneath the Bobcat, and I got a USB to 5.5 millimeter power uh, adapter, and I run that into a Y splitter for my PoE adapter. The PoE adapter runs one ethernet right here, and here's this 5.5. So what I did was I took that, I split it, so one goes to the machine, and the other one splits over here to supply power to my thermo gauge which then very easily converts over here to energy to these two big guys. Now, these guys are 80 millimeter fans. They're putting out about roughly 1600 RPM, which I find is pretty, pretty impressive and a good speed that I like to stick with. It does keep things cool. If you guys haven't seen, um, actually, I haven't shown you this, but in previous measurements in the same temperature, the outside was about 130 uh, and inside was actually greater temperatures. So in the fact that because this case is black right here, it's gonna absorb some heat better. The air that's inside of the case is cooler than the 100 degree air that's outside, but the surface temperature of the plastic is greater. I hope that all makes sense to you guys. You can build your own case just like this to keep everything in check. This case is gonna prevent it from overheating the Bobcat is rated for 140 degrees. It should never get above 140 degrees. Otherwise you risk permanent damage and possible slower time to reaction times or the machine not working properly. 
So here we go. Here's the, again, strategy on the case. Air in, heat rises, air goes out, hot air goes out. Again, that's why we put the bobcat on the bottom of the case and elements that generate greater heat goes at the top of the case. So hot air can warm and get pushed out of the system. All these parts and everything you see here will be available on our blog and in this video. It is actually, it is really simple. The hardest part you guys need to do for this is just drill a couple holes in the case. So these guys right here, these are their own individual vents. I just drew out a hole. I lined it up, drew out a hole, cut it out with a scroll saw, and then I was able to pop these in. And this is the coolest part is, you see these little rings right here? These rings screw onto the back of these vents securing it to it, but they have the complete correct bolt pattern for these standard 80 millimeter fans. So you can essentially screw the 80 millimeter fans to these locking rings, which will secure these to the case, and they have a rubber O-ring right there to make sure no moisture gets in through that area. So again, this is Digital Blocks. Do it yourself, AC enclosure. It will fit most miners, but there's a lot of different size miners that are coming out now, so we're really only counting that this will work for Bobcat miners. Um, that's it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Next video, we're going to show the Rise Tower, which is the one and only with a retractable mast that goes from 33 feet to 47 and a half feet, which right now it's at 47 and a half feet. And everything is internalized and we can raise and lower it completely within 15 seconds because of a pulley system we have down here on ground floor. Stay tuned for that video.